Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Slayer Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff and comparison review of the Bath & Body Works Thanksgiving Celebration Candle. The comparison being to the OG original White Barn Candle Company 2012 Thanksgiving Candle. Different notes, different fragrances, both equally weird and out there, certainly in the novelty fragrance family. But we'll get into that in a minute. If you are new to Touch the Fire Twice, though, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com. But right now, I wanna dig right into this candle. So this was the fifth drop in the recent weekly candle drops that Bath & Body Works has done. And it's an interesting marketing ploy of these, these interesting new releases. A little bit out there with a couple of them, but straightforward with the others as well. They've all had this similar art direction, a brand new color changing label, which again leans in on the novelty aspect of the collection. And of course I did a review on the first drop, which was the candied maple bacon. I have not reviewed, but I could review. I did purchase the three in the middle section there, which were sweater weather, sweet cinnamon pumpkin, chocolate espresso martini, and of course salted caramel pretzel. Book ended at the end here with Thanksgiving celebration. So this was released Friday, September 23rd. Did grab it, actually grabbed two of them. I have burned one. This is fresh unburned. So we'll sniff on that, but can give a post burn review on the other one that I have. Well, that is a strong candle just catching a whiff now. So it is sort of a dark green tablecloth there with, I suppose, mashed potatoes, your turkey on the table there, and perhaps cranberry sauce, though there's not a cranberry sauce note in the candle. And wildly enough, the you know, it, it's strange, it's weird. I kind of like it. Uh, there's parts of this I like that we'll get into. But again, super, super novelty, the idea of a Thanksgiving celebration candle certainly when they did it 10 years ago in 2012, it was a novelty. And we will dig in and compare that one, which was back in the Slack & Co era. But first with this one here, notes, mashed potatoes, side of gravy, sage stuffing with natural essential oils. And this one, there really is nothing to compare to other than the other Thanksgiving candle. So let's, let's sniff it and talk through it. So a couple of things I get from this. On first sniff, it is very heavy on earthy, fresh sage. Like you've got sage leaves and you know, they're like the kind of furry, you rub them and they are incredibly fragrant, soft. Sage is going to be earthy, herbaceous, a little bit musky, quite earthy. Not in the patchouli sort of earthiness, but still sort of the kind of dank, green, almost sweaty sort of borderline animalic musk to a true sage and those leaves when you rub them. Very, very, very intense. And I get a lot of that in here. And at first I didn't think I, I smelled gravy, but on a second sniff, there is there is sort of, I would almost like a sweetness, which is, that throws me off, it's a little strange. But yeah, like a, the most artificial, the, the sage smells authentically sage. The gravy is kind of, um, an herbed, I suppose, like, you know, kind of brown turkey gravy. I don't, doesn't really smell like, it's one of those things where you can tell that it's supposed to smell like gravy, but I don't think gravy typically smells like that in real life. It's kind of like maybe like the jarred pre-made gravy has a little bit of that to it, but it probably has some artificial or like natural flavors in it that are, okay, they're natural, but they're still like twisted and tied and, and not actually, you know, the, the scent of what you think you're smelling. It just happens to be natural versus synthetic or artificial. So that's, I guess there's some of that gravy in there, but it's more just like herbal and sort of an, a background umami savoriness as opposed to like a meatiness. But I mean, if it's gravy, it's got a bit of a turkey scent to it. And there's a bit of a turkey scent to this. And the sage is supposed to be sage stuffing. Okay, that, that works. I would almost say a, maybe a cornbread sage stuffing or in the South it would be dressing. I, I grew up in the Northeast, so to me it's stuffing. And I do like the cornbread stuffing because there is something in here that is almost like a sweet sort of cornbread, almost like hominy. When you think of those corn kernels that are dried and treated with alkali in a process called nixtamalization, that gives it sort of that more of the cornbread, freshly made tortillas scent versus your fresh sweet corn scent. And it's done primarily to keep the corn from sprouting when it's stored you know, over the winter or things like that. And so there is sort of like that hominy dried, but sweet-ish corn scent to this, I suppose. 
but not so much grits, but I could see almost like a cornbread stuffing perhaps with that sage. And I think maybe that's where some of the sweetness could be coming from for me. I don't really get the mashed potatoes, but mashed potatoes don't really, I mean, potatoes when they're just mashed have, you know, a neutral starchy scent to them, but unless they're, you know, French fried or covered in butter, sour cream, chives, whatever you throw on your mashed potatoes or in your mashed potatoes, they're pretty like a neutral base for adding additional scents flavors on top of. So I don't really get much of that here. Maybe a little bit of that base, like I'm, I, you know, it's easy to conflate the, let's call it cornbread stuffing with a mashed potato base because they're both starchy things that, you know, could be confused for each other. And it's not bad. It certainly is not gourmand. It is certainly novelty foodie because it does smell like food more than just botanicals and herbs, though sage is very prominent in this. I go back and forth from liking it. I wish there wasn't that sort of weird sweetness or the gravy. If it was just, if it was sage and hominy or grits or cornbread or something like that, it, you know, a, a sage cornbread with, you know, they could sweeten it up a little bit with like a jalapeno honey butter glaze. That could celebrate Thanksgiving. It wouldn't be the meal, like they're kind of, the, the goofiness they're going for here, but that could be a, a nice scent, potentially, with those notes and making it more gourmand with a savory gourmand. That is interesting, the idea of throwing in sort of the, that sweet cornbread note, the butter, which is traditional bakery gourmand, the honey, traditional bakery gourmand, but then that sage, just to make it a little bit of a, a twist, more herbal, a savory gourmand. Yeah, it's weird, but, and what I, and I will say, it performs well. I, it didn't really come across much different to me when burning, strong throw, average for your Bath and Body Works candles, what, what you would come to expect. But I'd say traditional, healthy, average burn performance, strength, throw, projection. Now comparing, I am, I'm glad I bought this, if only because now 10 years later, I'm able to make this video, which is wild and never thought they would bring another Thanksgiving candle out after the wild, weird flop that this one was. So let's go back in time. I may even have, I'll check. I may even have a video review of this or it appeared in some video, a haul video back in 2012 when I first had launched the channel. This was moving to Thanksgiving. I was excited when I heard about this. Um, I actually smelled it a week or maybe two weeks ago in a regular store uh, closer to me than the test store that I sometimes check out. But boy, oh boy, it is just, whew like very generic, intensely strong, but almost like a cheap cafeteria. <laughs> I hate to be so picky on this, but but it smells like, you know, like a, a buffet or cafeteria that's been sitting out and has like a, you know, like a skin developing on the top of the potatoes. And I, just like if you go to like a, a bodega that has, you know, a hot bar in it, like it's the, the leftover mashed potatoes in the corner that no one wants. It, I have like a like an instinctual like guttural reaction to this one for some reason where it really like it almost gags me a little bit which oof, yeah, yeah. <laughs> weird for channel. this was Honestly. fall of 2012 white barn candle branded Thanksgiving and you can see the label here the white barn collection it was the first time they were bringing back white barn as part of their brand after many years not focusing on it during the prime of the Slacken and Co partnership era so if you're thinking you're 05 to like 2012 2013. They were bringing back White Barn, little did we know at the time, it was because the Slack & Co partnership was ending, and so they were rebranding their home fragrance part of the business as White Barn, primarily. Though there were collections that were White Barn, collections that were Bath & Body Works Home, it was not that different than it is now, but it was a shift at the time. And this collection was White Barn, so it does not say Slack & Co on the bottom, though I do believe because there were collections this 2012 autumn that were Slacken & Co. I believe they all likely were Slacken & Co. Bath & Body Works. Again, it was really one and the same at that point, you know, for, for, for quite a few years, all from the same group of product directors and perfumers, whether that was evolving from Slacken & Co., a different sort of in-house form, or if it just naturally shifted over the years. No one outside of the, the, the company really knows, uh, and most wouldn't be interested outside of those of us that find the business of fragrance interesting. Point being, I consider this to be part of like the Slack & Co era of Bath & Body Works based on the timing. Notes on this. This fragrance serves up a mouth-watering helping of Thanksgiving delights with its blend of sweet potatoes, so not just the white potatoes matches, but sweet potatoes, 
nutmeg, pecans, vanilla, and melted butter. So they were trying to make this sound a little bit more towards that sweet gourmand. So if they're talking pecans, a sweet potato, vanilla, butter, nutmeg, it's more, you know, not dessert, but it's that that sweet potato that's got the sweet fixings on it. All you're missing is a little bit of, you know, cinnamon sugar or something to sweeten it up. But that's not at all what it smells like. The label here, again, just a cornucopia, some generic gourds in there. Not not great art direction, frankly. It's just got that plain font that just kind of blends in. Even close up, it is a little bit hard to see that it says Thanksgiving on it. And let's sniff on it. Whew, it kind of smells sweet now in not a great way, though some of that vanilla pecan might be coming out in there. It, For the most part, and I, I'm not the first person to say this, it really smells like boxed potato flakes, like instant mashed potatoes with an artificial butter flavoring to it. The sweetness is almost, <laughs> and the sweetness or the vanilla or the, the nuttiness almost smells like some sort of powdered milk or even just like canned evaporated milk, but maybe like, back in the 90s, this is weird. Back in the 90s, like Carnation Instant Breakfast, which was essentially just making milk into vanilla milk, strawberry milk, chocolate milk, but with, you know, vitamins and minerals added to it as if it was healthy with loads of sugar, of course, as well. That sort of weird artificial vanilla milkiness, maybe that's the butter, is what I get out of this. It's I don't want to say revolting, but it's close to it. Like, it was not good originally. I, I couldn't pass it up, which that's kind of what the novelty they went for back then, but they've really leaned into it with this weekly candle drop collection. But it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just the mashed potatoes with some artificiality built into the sweetness on top of the artificial potato flakes. Or real potatoes, but processed within the edge of no longer being real. Comparing, though, the two... I will say that this is a better interpretation of a savory Thanksgiving candle. I mean, just the aesthetics alone are, though, very novelty, kind of, you know, immature. Not that that's a bad thing, but the, the novelty side of that cartoony side um, is at least more pleasing and has a, a better focus than just a stock photo of a cornucopia. The, the blend, I think, makes more sense because whatever the potato slash stuffing notes are, they are a bit more authentic, though it's still hard to get authenticity in true like food items and not just bakery items. And the sage really kind of saves the day because it makes it tolerable and potentially a little bit desirable to some people who really just want to lean into that earthy, kind of musky sage angle of the candle. Completely different blends. They're not meant to be the same, just both Thanksgiving candles. Yeah, light, sweet, almost a bit of a, an artificial vanilla to that. This is your sage with some of that, let's call it corn, cornbread, base mashed potatoes, and the artificial, the most artificial smelling or inauthentic smelling because it's obviously all synthetic or mostly synthetic, natural essential oils. I'd love to know which ones. But that gravy, you know, the most artificial smelling that I wish they would have left that out. I think they could have done something a little bit more interesting. If it were up to me again, you want to do a Thanksgiving? I think if you did some sort of savory cornbread stuffing, it could work because it would be gourmand, savory, a little bit of sweetness for the bakery folks, but just a little surprise with, again, jalapenos or something sprinkled in there as well. Not full on, you know, fennel and sausage. Like that's just too much. It's just, it's just too much. It's silly, it's fun, it's a one-time thing. Why not go for it? It's something to talk about. I mean, again, as I say, I love fragrances if they are unique, authentic, and have good strength, performance, projection, throw, etc. Uh, this one is unique, authentic, not especially. Performance, fine. Not particularly desirable, but the unique fun factor, silliness, novelty of it is at least worth getting your nose on, if not maybe purchasing. So. That is all I've got to say about the Thanksgiving celebration. I do love Thanksgiving. I am I'm ready for it. Need to get through fall and into Halloween before, but I do love Thanksgiving. Really one of my top, top favorite times of year. Um, let me know what you think of this. If you ever did sniff the OG 2012 Thanksgiving, your thoughts on either of them, your thoughts on the weekly candle drops in general, what were your, your hits, what were your misses, your flops within that. Would love to hear it, and I'll have more videos coming up soon. And until next time, take care.